have seven minutes to tell my story. Um, if they paid me anything, I, I'd, I'd speak a little longer. Um, and I have a lot to go through. Um, uh, so let me just start this time here. So first of all, I have uh, uh, a company called Camissary Inc. And I'll be going into that in a, in, in a second. I'm going to try to start with a very fast uh, review of my background, where I come from. Uh, the next part is to give you a very brief case study on Camissary. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to review a number of tips that I'd like to share with you if you too are uh, thinking about starting up something entrepreneurial. So first of all, <clears throat> I, um, I was born in DC, uh, Washington DC. Uh, I grew up in Norway, Israel, Pakistan, Egypt, and Japan. My dad was an economist in the Foreign Service. I uh, returned to DC to go to high school and then went up to Boston to go to college. <clears throat> I got an undergraduate degree at Boston University. Um, my first job after, after graduation was with the Smithsonian Institution. Uh, I went back to uh, school to get a master's degree at Harvard in administration planning and social policy. Um, I worked, uh, consulted to the Harvard Business School for a number of years and then started a software company when PCs were first coming out. Took that software company international. We set up a, um, a subsidiary in, in Berlin, Germany, two weeks before the wall came down. <laughs> Very good timing. <laughs> ten, ten year leases uh, in Berlin was pretty good. Um, started a, I sold that company, took it international, sold the company, started another company in doing survey research, uh, published a book um, pu um, published by the American Library Association after that. Decided to go back and get a, a higher degree in order to teach at university, so I got a PhD at the University of uh, Toronto. Um, <clears throat> then I returned to Boston and I taught at Babson College, entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship at Babson College and at Harvard. Um, I, I then went to DC, and that, by the way, was a span of 43 years, so there was a lot going on then. I went to DC when my mom turned 100. I was the caregiver. She wanted to live alone, so I moved in basically to take care of her and uh, taught at American University and Georgetown uh, University. Another life transition brought me to Huntsville. Uh, I was lucky to be offered a job, a part-time position at the University of Alabama and Huntsville's business school, so where I've been teaching there uh, in entrepreneurship and also to build the local entrepreneurial ecosystem in, here in Huntsville. So I started Hot Coffee in September of 2013. Is anybody here, was anybody here present at the first meeting? All right, let's give them a round of applause. That is amazing. True, true believers. Um, I published a couple of books uh, that came out last year, published by the University of Toronto, and um, uh, a law text. Uh, and then I left after UAH could not keep me employed on a full-time basis, so I rolled off the faculty at UAH and I started Camissary in September of 2015. Let me go through. <laughs> I don't get it. Okay. <clears throat> so let me run through the Camissary story uh, here very quickly. And also, by the way, if you have any questions, I'd love to talk to you, but uh, we'll wait till networking time and you can come up to me at that point. So we started Canistory with basically five propositions. The first proposition is that, you know, the analog world is moving to a digital world. Uh, and it started with everybody started with email, and, you, and then you have your, your, your website. Now there's a lot of social media. And the question is, how do you use photography? How do you use video? How do you use 3D? Uh, these are all what we call your DNA, your digital native assets. So that's a huge opportunity here, is this transition of the entire world to a digital form. And the challenge there is to figure out, and this is for each of you, is to figure out what's going to be your most productive digital identity in that world. Uh, and we, we help you with that. Um, <clears throat> we look at multimedia, uh, that uh, this digital presence really is a multimedia presence, um, all the way from email to now 3D is uh, having a resurgence of interest. And um, another proposition is that expression on video is more powerful than just text or just audio. Uh, and we have some research to back that up. Um, the fifth proposition is that what we can do to differentiate ourselves as a video company is to bring to the table a bench in research and a bench in evaluation, both of which we use to inform both the content 
uh, and the um, follow-up evaluation of your video uh, products. Moving from propositions, what, what, have we, what have we found? We have four findings. One is that when you're on video, it doesn't matter whether people actually hear you. If they see certain traits, including your engagement, your passion, and your energy, you'll have an impact. And of course, this, this really resonates if you're going to give a, a business pitch, for example. And we've done, we've done those. Um, <clears throat> so that's one finding. Another finding is that if you're, no matter what your profession, if you offer people free tips, if you give them something without selling necessarily, uh, that's a very effective way to build the kind of trust and build the kind of relationship that you want for a long-term relationship with your clients or your customers. Uh, a third finding we found is that, uh, you know, everybody has their corporate brochure, um, their website, and so forth, and that's what I call a sort of coat and tie approach to presenting your services or your products to the world. What we have found is, especially with video, we can do an effective what's called behind the scenes video of you, or BTS. And, but what behind the scenes does is it shows you in action. It shows what goes on while you're actually doing something. And when people see that about you, it's much more powerful than any words you can put into a brochure or in a website. Because seeing something is, is a very powerful way to, to, to help people understand what you're all about. So um, behind the scenes is a very powerful sort of new genre that we're getting into. The fourth finding is that you know, video, especially professional video, is not cheap. And one of the ways that you can keep costs down and make it affordable is basically to tell your own story. Don't put it on us to try to figure out what you want to say in your video or how to get it across. The extent to which we can help you tell your own story, write your own script, put together a storyboard, we'll work with you. But the extent to which you can do that and learn to tell your own story um, will, will help financially. What sort of content have we done? This is a checklist of all the people that we've helped in, in Huntsville. Artists and artisans, politicians, engineers, startups, nonprofits, musicians and storytellers, and, and businesses who are selling their services and their products. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll see sample videos uh, in all of these categories. Um, and I have to tell you that this business, uh, being in the video business, is, is incredibly gratifying. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's very creative. And when we're done, we have a great relationship with the people that we work with. And then when we're done, we really feel as if we've helped somebody. And it's tangible, it's visible, and it has an impact. So it's a great business to be in. I will say something about the market in Huntsville. It's a small market. It's a very homogenous market. Um, uh, my sense is that the older video companies kind of have it locked up. It's very hard to break in as a new video company here. Um, <clears throat> and so speaking to the future, that has kind of forced us to consider making a strategic shift away from video as a services only company to developing products. So we're now in the process of thinking about how to develop some products. They could be pay-per-view, they could be software products, they could be hardware products. But basically we want to shift from services only. Um, we have a clinic. It's a free clinic. I've got it posted up here. Uh, the next one is Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday from 11 to noon at 306 uh, Wind Drive. And at this clinic, we tell you all about how we develop video and what you can do to develop your own video. Uh, so please email me at whitman at camissary.com if you'd like me to reserve a, a seat for you there. And we try to run that uh, free clinic every other Wednesday. Um, the final thing we're, we're doing here is uh, we just brought out an ebook, which is available on Amazon. And it's how to plan your first professional video. So it has basically the content of the, um, of the clinic, and it's available to you in a, a, an ebook book uh, for, for $2.99. So you, you, you got to order that. Don't search for my name, because there are too many John Whitmans out there. Um, but if you search for, the, if you search for the, the author Nathan Bivens, uh, it will come up. I think it's the first listing. And um, hey, Nathan. That's Nathan. <laughs> and, um, I, I just, uh, okay, so that's basically the, 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 the case study. Um, what about opportunity identification here for other entrepreneurs? 
five, five tips. One is a self-analysis. You have to do a really critical self-analysis. And what you're doing is you're looking principally for three traits. One is motivation. You have to be obsessively motivated, intrinsically motivated, uh, to go through what you need to do to be a successful entrepreneur. The second thing is you have to have a compelling vision. You have to have a real vision. It's either how to change the world or how to bring in a new product or service or improve one. But the vision is very important and it, of course it has to engage the people who you're going to work with as well. And the final notion here is one called agency. And that is that you have to have it in you to be able to overcome incredible barriers and to make things happen that maybe other people can't, can't see their way to. So the sense of agency or, or intrinsic power is very important. The second thing here is to make sure that the partners, and you will need partners, no entrepreneurs are, are solo. So you're going to need partners, uh, both people who are advisors and of course people who work with you. Um, you want the best in the business. Uh, it's, much, it's much better to have an A team with a B level idea than it is to have a B team with, a, with an A level idea. So your partners are really crucial and make sure you're on the same page. So you're both working together. The third thing is this notion of opportunity cost. That typically, uh, if you're going to start something up, you have options. Uh, you can, you know, like your current paid job or maybe an alternative job. So when you look at the uh, opportunity to do something entrepreneurial, you have to keep in mind what sort of opportunity cost that means. Um, in some uh, cases, uh, we're talking here about deferred compensation. You may have to go a long time before you yourself get any compensation, but hopefully, if you play your cards right, um, you'll get compensation downstream. The fourth thing here is really important, and that is don't undertake anything that's going to cost you more than you can afford to lose. So this notion of affordable cost is really critical. And the final thing here is that even if you're in a service business, you ought to think in terms of, build, of creating products, because it's through products that you can build asset value. And if you build asset value, especially if it's of interest to some other company that wants to acquire you, that's your key to that deferred compensation. All right, so if you want to follow up with any of these things, please uh, see me during networking time. Uh, but I want to close by thanking some people who've been really helpful to us starting up. There's Krista Campbell over there, uh, who's in the real estate business. She's been incredibly helpful. Vicki Morris, of course, here has been uh, um, amazingly helpful and continues to be. Rich Ortiz, who's not here, but he does a lot of video work, and he's been very generous with us in sharing ideas and sending clients our way. And also David Goodman, professor of video at, at UAH. And there are many others. Uh, so with that, thank you very much. <laughs>